Welcome to the lesson 33 of industrial instrumentation. In this particular lesson, we will study the flapper nozzle or rather flapper nozzle system. Flapper nozzle is a very important uh, I mean, item in um, uh, most of the pneumatic systems or pneumatic based instrumentation because as you know that uh, even though we are as uh, many sensors and all those things are converted to the uh, electronic domain, but uh, still in some cases we need this pneumatic system for the safety reason as well as for the large uh, controlling the large control valve and all those things. And uh, especially in the petrochemical industries or hydrocarbon industries where the uh, electronic systems or electrical system is forbidden to use because there is a voltage rating which should be not uh, it should not be above 45 volt uh, in that system also uh, we should we need this flapper nozzle system. Now, flapper nozzle system the advantage is that you see that it has a uh, it has it can be used as a displacement sensor it can be used as a um, it can be used as a uh, differential pressure transmitter and so on. We will discuss all these things in details. Let us look at the content, introductions, then we will go to the principle of operation, then we will go to displacement measurements and displacement sensors rather we will see there how the flapper nozzles can be utilized to make the displacement sensor. We have a reverse acting pneumatic relay because uh, the I mean uh, you will see that uh, to make that to uh, keep this uh, pneumatic sensor I mean flapper nozzle systems in the linear region we will find that uh, we should make the movement of the flapper very very small. So, to do that thing we need some pneumatic relay. So, we will discuss this in details which is called reverse acting pneumatic relay. Then we will also see the current to pressure converter or I 2 P converters uh, using the flapper nozzle systems how we can make I 2 P converter because in many pro in the process always we need to I 2 P converters. Many cases we will find the whether the 4 to 20 milli ampere of current we have to convert to 3 to 15 psi of pressure. So, in that type of situations we need this I 2 P converter. Then differential pressure transmitter this also we will discuss in details because differential pressure transmitter as we know that we need it in many process and though we have now electronic system, but in still this different pneumatic differential pressure transmitter is uh, still used in many process industries right. Because as you know, we have studied in during the flow meter that in the flow measurements the flow is calibrated in terms of pressure right differential pressure that is to be transmitted. We can transmit 4 to 20 milli ampere, but we can uh, transmit to directly 3 to 15 psi pressure also. So, we we'll discuss this thing how we can make with the flap nozzle system I mean a differential pressure transmitter. Basic introduction, flap nozzle is one of the most in, uh, versatile and versatile device it finds its replication at displacement measuring devices in differential pressure transmission and as an IP converter. The basic principle which is the which is the movement of flapper depending on the air pressure coming from the nozzle remains the same as in each application. In all applications we will find there is a there is a nozzle and through which the continuous air is bleeding to that uh, nozzles and we have a flapper this nozzle position is fixed, but the flapper position is I mean variable. Now, we will find that if the flapper position varies we are getting some I mean uh, pilot pressures or back pressures. So, which can be utilized which can be calibrated in terms of pressure currents and so on right. Application as a displacement measuring devices so, let us look at the displacement measuring devices how the flapper. Now, to know the displacement measuring device let us first look at the what is this flapper nozzle system looks like. A flapper nozzle system is used for the measurement of small displacement. A small movement of the flapper can result in a large change in the output pressure and hence it is treated as a displacement to pressure converter. Okay. Basically, I am getting pressure please all the flapper nozzle system please note the output is pressure whether it is I am measuring the displacement or velocity or current output is in terms of pressure 3 to 15 psi or it is whatever in kg if you say. Uh, it does not matter. So, it is uh, I mean it is a output is pressure. So, that is it is treated as I as you look at the last line and it is treated as a displacement to pressure converter. Such transducers are designed 
for use on both hydraulic and pneumatic power supplies. It is used as a pneumatic and hydraulic power supplies. The pneumatic system is operated at an air pressure range of 15 to 30 psi. A, I am talking of the supply pressure, but we will find that the pressure with control output which we will get from the or the range of the output which we will get from the pneumatic system, our flapper nozzle system is 3 to 15 psi. Flapper nozzle system, let us look at this is the basic flapper nozzle system. So, you can look at very carefully. Okay. You see here that we have one this is our nozzle, it is small in diameter, it is a circular in nature, right. These are nozzles and this is a flapper which moves in these directions, which moves in this direction as you can see it is written. So, it moves in this direction, it moves in this direction. You can see here. Now, you see there is a continuous flow of pressure which is called the supply pressure of air and there is a fixed supply restriction. These restrictions will make a constant pressure okay, which is constant P s I mean it, it will make a restriction. So, that you will get a constant bleeding of air through this nozzle. Now, you see that if the uh, if the flapper goes out if the flapper goes in this direction if the flapper moves in these directions you will find the more air will leak through this nozzle. This is the nozzle which is in circular in shape this is the nozzle I mean the more air will. So, this will reduce the pressure P naught and obviously, please note that P s will not change that means, the supply pressure will not change, but this back pressures or pilot pressure will change this P o will change it has some temperature T o. Okay. It might be different from the supply pressure temperature T s it does not matter. Right. Now, if it moves in this direction the flapper moves in this direction as if I use it as a displacement sensor. If it displacement sensor obviously, I will put the displacement to the flapper this is not it this is a hinge here. So, it moves in this direction. Okay. So, either it will go in these directions or it will go in this direction these are neutral positions what we have in the flapper. Right. Now, you see that when it moves in this direction. So, it will allow less air to leak through this flapper because there is a continuous bleeding because supply pressure P s is coming. So, this will lead to the increase of the pressure P o or output pressure. These output pressures will be calibrated in terms of not the temperature output pressure will be calibrated in terms of the displacement. This is the basic principles of the all flapper nozzle system. So, you will find that whether it is a temperature current it does not I mean current it does not matter you will find that everywhere this is the basic principles. This is output P o which used to be calibrated in terms of the process parameters we actually we are measuring. Here the process parameters we have taken as a displacement clear. Now, let us look at the ambience I mean this the all the regions we are talking about P atmospheric is the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Then X i is the displacement of the flapper if you look at X i is the displacement of the flapper. G u is the outlet mass flow we are considering here mass flow also not the volumetric flow the mass flow mass flow of air. G s is the inlet mass flow right inlet mass flow inlet flow from the supply pressure which is coming from. Then we have a P s and T s is the pressure of the supply air and its temperature pressure of the supply air and its temperature. Then P o is the pressure output okay. also it has a temperature of T naught that we have not mentioned in the region. Okay. So, it is always bleeding to the atmospheric pressure clear. The output pressure of the nozzle back chamber is measured by a pressure sensor. So, you can use many pressure sensor we have studied so many pressure sensors. So, I can use to measure the pressure by any gauges like diaphragm gauges these that we have studied so many. So, we can use utilizing I mean any principles I mean principle we can make a diaphragm is one of the most suitable diaphragm gauge also can be used okay, pressure sensor. The flapper nozzle system shown in the figure that means figure 1 consists of a chamber of small volume connected to a constant pressure source which is P s on one side and vented or bleeded on the other side to the atmosphere through a nozzle. Okay, this is a basic principle if you say the what is the flapper nozzle system you must write this line that means it is saying that the flapper nozzle system which is consists of a chamber of small volume connected to a constant pressure 
source on one side which is supply pressure and vented or breeded on the other side to the atmosphere through a nozzle. The flapper in front of the nozzle is used to regulate the rate of air flow bleeding out through the nozzle to the atmosphere. As I told you, we have explained that the how the movement of the flapper will control the regulate the rate of the uh, air flow or the air I mean which is bleeding to the atmosphere. When the flapper is held tightly against the nozzle, no air leaks out and ultimately the output pressure P O reaches the value of the supply pressure, right? Obviously, is not it. When I tightly that situation never arises in a flapper nozzle system. That means, if the flapper if suppose I have a flapper here. So, I have my so if this is the flapper uh, this is a nozzle through which the air is continuously I have a supply pressure on this side. So, suppose this is I am flapper is now moved and we have controlled we have totally stopped it bleeding. Then what will happen to the P O output pressure? Output pressure will be equal to the supply pressure is not it because is nothing is vented to the atmosphere. So, the output pressure P O will be equal to the supply pressure. When the flapper is held too far away, it has no effect or control on the output flow rate and the flow rate is governed by the system size and configuration. That is a also it is more important this will tell you the range total range of the flapper nozzle system. That means, total range of the displacement sensors which are going to design. What I am saying if it goes away from the I mean far away from the uh, nozzle itself. So, that the, suppose I have a nozzle. So, flapper goes away this one. So, that time there is no control that means, if I move like this one there is no control over the bleeding of the air because ultimately by the movement of the um, uh, flapper I have to regulate or control the, uh, the air which is coming out from the nozzle. If I cannot then obviously, there is no, con no control. So, whatever wherever position you put it. So, it has no output pressure will not change ok. That time continuous bleeding of the air through the atmosphere. So, it depends on the system geometry or system size and configuration. As a system is designed for measurement of the displacement, the supply side restrictor and the nozzle are so designed that the output pressure never falls to the atmospheric pressure even with the flapper held far away ok. It is to be done like that. So, that the you have to regulate the movement of the uh, flapper in such a way. So, the output pressure will never come to the atmospheric pressure. Now, if this is the flapper nozzle characteristics if you look at we have plotted here on the x axis the P naught by P s ok normalized you see this normalized I mean I mean we have normalized pressures we have plotted here on the y axis and the x axis we have plotted what we have plotted we have plotted the displacement of the flapper from the normal positions. If you look at you see the graph looks like this one right P s is constant if the P o increases then what will happen that means, it is the distance from the flapper distance of the flapper from the nozzle become getting decreased and decreased. This is side we are avoiding you see this portion that means, it is very close to the tight positions or stopping the bleeding up here. So, you see it is coming horizontal after that is when it is far away when the flapper is far away you see the x i is greater and greater. So, it has a constant value of the P o by P s. So, we will be more interested in this linear region if you look at we will be more interested in this linear region of the flapper we will do the calculations later on in 5 right. So, we will find that the, these pressures with these pressures the P o by P a will con this will correspond to a pressure of 3 to 15 psi ok for a some predicted uh, displacements of the flapper. The above show small change in the displacement. If you look at the graph, the, the plot that means fall or the slope, the above shows a small change in the displacement produces a large output change. Small change in the displacement produces a large output change. Supply side restrictors, we have load we have two type of restrictors. We have a supply side restrictors, we have a load side restrictor. Load side that means on the flapper side, that means uh, and supply side means which is as a restrictors and from the supply of the air which is coming in to the uh, coming into the uh, flapper nozzle system. You see here estimations the parameters from the experimental flows. You see here we have mass flow rate we have plotted here G s. This is a sonic flow or choked flow and this subsonic flow you see up to this and after this it is falling down and P s is a supply pressure P o is some mid position of the flapper systems where the pressure is coming out. Okay. Now, what are the legions? Let us look at. Now, load side restricted looks like this one. You see here for different position of the x i, 
okay, for different position of the x i if i if i change the g u if i change the p u how my g u will change. So, we have plotted like this in this particular graph. This is supply side restrictor same things again we have plotted slope is it is I am sorry it will be slope e k n x g u we have plotted and x i is a displacement. So, what is this legend let us look at let us look one by one. In the neighborhood of the operating point we can do a linear approximations that means at the linear point that means if I look at that means uh, if I sorry if I look at that means the plot is sorry no I can take some other uh, pages so uh, some other color. you see so the restriction is long. So, I can approximate these positions and I can take this as a linear region this actual operating point of the this will correspond to 3 to 15 psi of pressure as a controlled output clear of the flapper nozzle system. In this neighborhood of the operating point we can do a linear approximation we can assume that the system is a linear system. Now, we are writing G s equal to G s p o equal to G s o what are the legends I will explain plus derivative of G s with respect to p o at p o equal to uh, p o o multiplied by p o minus p o which can be written as G s o plus k s f p o p where now the legends we are explaining which corresponds to uh, three four slides which I have shown. G s o is the value of G s at equilibrium operating point, P o is the value of P o at equilibrium operating point right, P o p is a small change in P o from P o. So, there is a small change from the equilibrium point because now there is a displacement. So, that is point I am the output pressure. So, we are writing P o p. K s f is the value of D G s by derivative of G s okay, supply side I mean I mean restricted. DPO at operating point. So, we can write GUS equal to GU PO XI equal to GUO plus KNP POP plus KNX XIP. GUS is the value of GU at equilibrium operating point and XIP the small departure from the equilibrium operating point. Therefore, I can immediately write that GU equal to GUO plus del of GU plus DPO uh, upon DPO. I mean del of D, I mean G u with respect to P o at x i 0 and P 0 0 multiplied by P o minus P o plus del of G u with respect to x i. One side we are making the uh, derivative with respect to this is all partial derivative with respect to the output pressures and other side with respect to the displacement. Okay. So, that is we are multiplying the uh, relative displacement or change of displacement x i minus x i naught. Similarly, here the change of pressure p o minus p o. What is g u g s already we have explained. Now, we know that that in a flapper nozzle system mass in which is mass in means mass of air flow which is coming in minus mass out obviously, the additional mass stored inside the flapper inside the nozzle okay, inside nozzle system I should say. right? So, if I write there is obviously, I can immediately write the equations which is G s o plus K s f P o p D t minus G u o plus K n p plus uh, multiplied P o p plus K n x x i p all multiplied by D t. Now, from the gas theory we know that P o v equal to m p r t naught. So, that we can write immediately v by r t naught equal to D p. Let us assume that the G s o equal to G u o that means, at the initially that the supply which is coming G s o the mass flow which is coming in and going out mass flow rate it is same. So, if it is same then obviously, we can assume that V by R t naught derivative of P o p with respect to D t t time K n p minus K s a P o p plus K n x into x i p equal to 0. Let we assume some introduce let us some constant k equal to minus k n x upon k n p minus k s f and tau time constant equal to v by r t naught k n p minus k s f. 
or obviously if I make little manipulations, so it will give you tau s plus 1 p o p equal to k x i p. So, this will lead to a first order differential equations or the I mean the if you look at the response p o p with respect to x i p will be equal to k upon tau s plus 1. Thus, we see this about it is a first order system. So, I can say that the, you know, the flapper dozer system is a we can consider as a first order system. It is also a reverse kind of transducers that means, that means if I forcibly if I change because there is a spring action. So, if I change the pressure, so obviously change the I mean breeding pressure there which is coming out obviously, the I will get a displacement there that is the reason you call the reverse kind of transducer. It is very fast acting amplifier with good resolutions. So, I mean talking if you consider the pneumatic amplifiers. So, it is a fast acting amplifier with good resolution sensitivity is also quite high that we have already seen. And from the graph also we can predict that it has a good resolutions used in precision measurements. So, obviously, for very small displacements I can use this slapper nozzle system because we can we have seen that we are getting a large change in the for small displacement we are getting a large change in the um, normalized pressure output. Construction nozzle diameter is typically 1 by 32 in, uh, inches which is 0 0.8 millimeter volume is 1 inch cube which is around 16 cc it is quite small. Supply orifice diameter 1 by 16 fourth inch or 0.4 millimeter which is called fixed side restriction. Value of k is typically 8000 psi per inch because this will give you a static sensitivity right. Now, if I draw the electrical equivalent circuit of a flapper nozzle system, so we can represent it by a simple RC circuit. Okay, so, the analysis will be uh, easier if I can represent by a simple RC circuit. Okay, it is very simple I mean variable resistors where that the if you look at the load side restrictor you will find that there is a variable resistance which can I can replace by a potentiometer or a rheostat and at the supply pressure restrictors we can uh, represent by a simple resistors and the volume we can represent volume of the total volume of the flapper nozzle system we can replace by a we can capacitor. So, keeping all this in mind we got the following uh, following electrical representations of our flapper nozzle system which looks like this. You see this is our flapper nozzle systems these R i and C R i is the uh, input side that means, supply side restrictor representing and this is R o is a load side restrictors I am giving V i we are giving V o these are electrical representations of our flapper nozzle system where R o is a variable restriction. R i is a fixed restriction. What is the fixed uh, fixed restriction? That is at the input side, the restrictions which you are getting that is a fixed restri restrictions. Then C is a capacity of the systems that is a volume. So, this actually make our flapper nozzle system. The transfer function so easily we can find the transfer function of the electrical system is given by V naught by V i into S R naught R i plus R o 1 upon 1 plus S C multiplied by R o into R i upon R o plus R i. You see here let us uh, I mean recall redraw the equation the flapper nozzle systems we have just redrawn we have changed the position it does not matter it can be flapper can be this side this can be that side I mean the nozzle can be the supply air can be this side or that can be that side it does not matter much. You see the same the no, circuit I mean flapper nozzle diagram because we refer to this that is the reason we have redrawn this in the figure 7 right. Now, let us how will I compute the static sensitivity of the flapper nozzle systems. Let us redraw the flapper nozzle system as I told you in the figure 7 that is just we have redrawn the figure okay. it is same as the figure 7 there is no difference. For static sensitivity calculation the flow through the restriction is assumed to be incompressible right flow through the restrictor is incompressible first we assume in many uh, fluid dynamics method we have seen that we have assumed like this one right. Now, flow through the fixed restriction is given by f 1 c d 1 pi d 1 square by 4 root over p s minus p o which is equation number 1 clear where did I get this equation very simple I got this equation from our basic orifice I mean um, orifice principles Bernoulli is using the Bernoulli's principles we will get this one 
let us go look at what is D1 and what is. You see, D1 is the supply side restricted diameter orifice diameter, and D2 is the load side restrictive I mean restriction diameter, which is circular in nature. Okay. So, C D 1 is the flow coefficients on the supply side and C D 2 is the flow coefficient of at the load side or the flapper nozzle side. Right. If I have that thing obviously, equation looks like this. Okay. So, C D 1 is the discharge coefficient of fixed restrictions that means, supply side restrictions P S P O you know there is output pressures and P S is the our supply pressure. As nozzle uh, the discharges air to the atmosphere, the flow through the nozzle is as the nozzle flow discharges air to the atmosphere again the flow rate instead of volumetric flow rate I am talking about is mass flow rate I am talking about the volumetric flow rate to the nozzle is will look like F 2 equal to C D 2 pi D 2 into x dot into P naught. Okay. This equation this side is slightly different we have seen that this is instead of we have uh, taken the circumference multiplied by the x naught that is displacement that is we are taking at the bleeding volume right. Let us look at here yeah, C D 2 is the discharge coefficient of the nozzle x dot x bar is the distance of the flapper from the nozzle. Okay. So, distance of the flapper of the nozzle multiplied by the this pi D 2 will give you the flow clear. If I have that thing, so obviously, this is again I mean it's coming in uh, in the meter square or something like that. Now, I will assume that the condition of the flow continuity, okay. what is mean by the flow I mean equation uh, continuity that means, if 1 equal to f 2 and moreover we assume the two discharge coefficients will be same even though there is a lot of assumptions for simplifications of our calculation let us calculate C D 1 that means, C D 1 equal to 2 discharge coefficients of same and also assume there is a flow continuity is there. Then equation 1 and 2 if I then combine this equation 1 and 2 we will get that 16 d square into x bar square by d 1 to the power 4 equal to p o equal to p s minus p o which will give us P S P O minus P S 1 upon 1 by 16 D 2 x bar D 1 square whole square. Let us look at how did I get this thing. Let us take a blank page or let me take this one. It will look like this you see F 1 equal to C D because we have assumed that C D 1 equal to C D 2. We assume like this and take a thinner pen I think that will be better. That means, C D 1 equal to C D 2 and F 1 flow from the supply side equal to C D equal to we write C D this will be equal to C D pi D 1 square by 4 root over P s obviously, will be more than P o. So, P s minus P o and the nozzle side flow flow rate we can write C D again multiplied by pi D 2 2 pi r. So, instead of 2 pi r I am writing pi D 2 into x bar okay. x bar is the movement of the flapper from the nozzle into P o. Okay. Since, we know that F 1 equal to F 2. So, we will get 16 d 2 square x bar square into P o divided by d 1 to the power 4 P s minus P o equal to 1. Okay. So, this will lead to 16 d 2 square x bar square p o 
by d 1 to the power 4 p s minus p o right. So, I can write p s minus p o by p o equal to 16 d 2 square x bar square p o divided by d 1 to the power 4. So, this will lead to p s by p o equal to 1 plus 16 d 2 square x bar square upon d 1 to the power 4 right. So, I can write that p o by p s if I take a new page p o by p s equal to 1 upon 1 plus 16 d square d 2 here I write x bar here I write by d 1 square to the power all square. This is our equations. Okay. This actually we have explained in the our ultimate equations in the, the that is normalized output how the normalized output is relates to the displacement. right? So, this is our expression 1 upon 1 plus 16 d d 2 plus uh, I am sorry I think that will be uh, 16 d 2 because if I take 16 inside. So, it will be it will be here it will be 16 if I So, it will be here if I take 16. So, this will be I let me write down this equation. This will be let me take pen. So, this will be like this one p naught by p s 1 upon 1 plus 16 will take outside, then I will get d 2 x bar by d 1 square to the power whole square, right. This is my final equation. Anyway as you have seen. Now, assumptions made for arriving at equation 1 and 2 are involved uh, there are I mean what are the in, I mean assumptions basic assumptions we have taken. The velocity of approach is neglected for small x bar the area of the nozzle outlet to the atmosphere is taken as pi d 2 into x bar instead of pi d 2 square by 2. Okay. pi d 2 square by 4 we have taken pi d 2 into x bar because we have seen that it is variable that is the reason we have taken like this one. Whereas, in the supply side restricted we have taken pi d 1 square by 4 that is a simple orifice formula we have taken. The normalized response curve is shown in figure 8. What is the figure 8? Let us look at this is a normalized response curve. Let us look at very carefully. This is our plot p n normalized output by input p naught by p s x n x n bar this is also we have plotted in the x axis which is d 2 x bar by d 1 square right. This graph is very important this will control the entire position. You see here if I come down so obviously, what will happen the if I to come to the close to the uh, to the nozzle when the flapper moves close to the nozzle that means you will find that the output pressure is increases which is supposed to be. So, this is a normalized response curve from this curve we will do so many other things. Now, response slope d p n by d x n is approximately linear for short x n and p n ranges. What is that? You see here. So, d p n by x n that means this slope 
which is uh, supposed to be actually if I say that it is uh, this slope is actually if I take a, a thicker plane this slope is equal to actually that d p n by d x n. Okay. So, this slope is actually will give you the response of the Fallopian nozzle system approximately linear for short x n and p n ranges for very I mean small ranges we will find which is linear this is very important. So, we need a linear relationship right from the beginning we have seen in many all instrumentation cases we need a linear relationship. The maximum slope for sensitivity is obtained by equating the d square p n from basic I mean uh, basic elementary of our calculus we know d square p n by d x s x n square equal to 0 such that x n bar equal to 0 0.144 right that is a value for which we will get the maximum. So, which gives d p n by d x n bar equal to 2 pi minus 2.59 and this means uh, this minus sign signifies that the slope is negative okay, that we have seen from the graph the slope is negative and p n equal to 0.75 negative sign indicates the slope is negative when x n bar is sufficiently large p n becomes constant that we have seen when it is it is coming it is a constant right when x n bar is I mean how does it look you see we have seen How does it look? It look like this one. You see here. If I take a blank page, so the slope will look like. So if I take a, this one, that already we explained. Becoming, I mean, if you don't take that much, so it will look like this one. So the pressure is x n is far away, bar is far away. You'll find that it is becoming constant. So it is pressure is constant. That means P O by P S is constant here. Okay. If I take different pen, sorry. Right, so it is coming like this. Slope is looks like this one. So P O by P S is constant to this value. Right, when X n is large, clear. So to avoid this zero sensitivity portion that the lower and upper limits or bounds are fixed to p n equal to 0 0.75 okay. normalized output is 0 0.75 and p n equal to 0 0.15 because I cannot take p n equal to uh, obviously 0 I mean I mean it is a p n 0 means it is not possible that means that is this I am talking about I mean so I have taken a I mean range of p n equal to 0 0.75 to p n equal to 1.15. For supply pressure of 20 psi, we will find that this will lead to P O to lie between 3 to 15 psi. Okay. For P n, I can I cannot make it 0. So, if I make it 0, there is a problem. So, that because we need a continuous bleeding of air through the nozzle. So, I cannot make it 0. Uh, so, P n I make the P s 20 psi for the supply pressure of 20 psi this will give to 3 to 15 psi. This is the key reason you will find in all the pneumatic systems always we are getting this value. We, many a times we are calling the industry standard is 3 to 15 psi of the control pressure where it came from actually. Okay. This is the reason why it is I mean this is the point where it actually came from. right? So, 3 to 15 psi because why I want to make it within this range because this will make take the linear portion of our graph. So, the, the flap and nozzle system will be linear in this region that is the reason we are limiting this pressure. The upper limit is fixed mainly by the pipe thickness the lower is not kept 0 to enable positive check on the control pressure on the low side as well to avoid the leakage any leakage from outside into the system. There should be always some bleeding. So, that is the reason why we are saying there. So, there is no if there is not bleeding there, there is a chance of the output pressure will come output atmospheric air will come inside the system. So, that we do not allow. So, that is the reason we have to always leakage okay. to always there will be some bleeding of the air from the nozzle to the atmosphere. Flapper nozzle with re-air relay this is another important thing. 
in order for the flapper nozzle to work satisfactorily the pressure changes must be small. We have seen that the pressure change must be small, so it is very very small right. This is accomplished by using an air relay, it is excellent thing you see the how it works. A control pressure of 3 to 15 psi obtained from the relay by a process pressure change of only 3 to 5 psi and this involves only one sixth of the original movement of the flapper. So, uh, I mean strictly I am bringing the I mean because I am saying that 3 to 15 psi, but I am saying that if I can even reduce the movement of the flapper to a smaller to this value then what will happen I will get a less pressure. We will find that the pressure changes in this type of situation so will be 3 to 5 psi, but with the relay I will make it to 3 to 15 psi which is the industry standard how it looks like let us look. Here the flapper position is directly proportional to the pressure change. In other words, the system is strictly operated in the linear region. Okay. The schematic shown in the relay is you see this is the relay position, this is our from the process there is a bellow you can see here, okay. there is a bellow. So, if the pressure increases this flapper will move further here in this direction, okay. let me take this bellow will move in this direction, the flapper will because this is a fixed end of the bellow, uh, I mean the bellow the flapper will move in this direction vertically it will move in this direction I mean horizontally if it moves then what will happen you see that the more air will leak out more air will leak out this will reduce the pressure here. So, if we reduce the pressure this will what will happen you see that ultimately it will reduce the inside pressure inside this uh, diaphragm gauge. So, this diaphragm will come down if the diaphragm will come down what will happen you see diaphragm will come down. So, this ball will come down. So, allowing the more pressure I mean the allowing the so allowing the more pressure to indicate. So, that means the more I mean uh, signal to the uh, remote station. Okay. So, this is the basic principle at other way if I if the flapper moves in this direction this will increase the flapper. So, it will move this in, in this direction. So, in the, if it moves in this direction the supply less air will come to the gauges it will show less right. Let us look at the air relay is reverse acting type with the flapper moving away the largest process when the process pressure is large from the nozzle the pressure P i falls and the diaphragm comes down along with the ball D. Okay. Pressure P i this is the pressure P i because if it comes down the pressure P i falls along with the ball D. Right. So, it is close the path B again if I go down go back it close the path B. So, this path will go because this will now valve since the pressure increases this will move out. So, this path there is no chance of here to come close the path B more and the passage between A and C is more open what is look at sorry passage between A and C will be more open. So, this will come down if the valve is coming down sorry if the valve is coming down then what will happen. So, there is a less path so that less if the valve is I mean coming down say so what will happen. So, there is a less path to come here, but the more path A and C will be more and more open. And the passage between A and C is more open giving a larger pressure indication in gauge G 2. Okay. So, when the P i falls when the G 1 is showing some I mean lower pressure G 2 will show the larger pressure. The reading in gauges G and 2 or is always inversely related it is another way also when the flapper is coming coming close when the system pressure is less then what will happen flapper will come close then the ball will move the G 2 pressure will be high pressure showing by the uh, G, sorry pressure showing by the G 1 will be high. So, the what will happen that the uh, diaphragm will go up if the diaphragm goes up obviously, it will show the less chance I mean less it will restrict the uh, air passage to the gauge G 2. So, that is the reason we are telling that the G 1 and G 2 will be always inversely related right. So, G 1 and G 2 will be G 1 and G 2 will be this is G 1 you can see here this is G 1 sorry G 1 and G 2 will be inversely related 
okay, this is g 1 and g 2 will be related, inversely related. With the flapper moving away, that is already we have explained. Now, as the output pressure P o is diverted derived sorry derived from the supply pressure P s, the highest reading is limited by this factor, right. The air relay gives this amplified output for a small change in pressure signal. Air relay will give say amplified output for a small change in pressure signal. That is the reason from 3 to 5 psi, so I am getting a signal from 3 to 15 psi. Now, current to pressure converter I to P converter as I told you this is very widely used in industry. Current to pressure transducers are used primarily in the process control to change a 4 to 20 milli ampere of electronic signal from a electronic control into 3 to 15 psi for a pneumatic controller. An effective I and P must incorporate the following features. What are the following features? It must provide air to the receiver quickly, accurately and in sufficient quantity. It must be able to exhaust air quickly when the signal decreases. Sorry. It must it should be consumes uh, it should consume a minimum amount of supply air for operation. It should be easy to repair, must be sufficiently rugged to withstand difficult environmental conditions, including variations. Um, dirty supply of air that is not very important usually we can filter the air temperature extremes and corrosive conditions. The flapper nozzle system modestly fulfills the above all criteria that is the reason we are using the because it is not very much affected by the temperature that is most important thing in the flapper nozzle system. Now, traditional flapper nozzle system is shown in figure 10 you see here. So, this is a traditional flapper nozzle system you see the current is coming to the electromagnetic coil here. Okay current is coming here, current is coming here, right. So, there is a bellows you see the what will happen that pressure it will if it comes down. So, this will increase the pilot pressure here or back pressure. Okay. So, the flapper now position of the flapper depends on the position of the flapper depends on the current. I want to make I to P converter. Ultimately, the position of the flapper will be corresponds to the pilot pressure. Okay. This is the pilot pressure should be a function of the current, but the current actually will control the position of the flapper. right? So, this there is a hinge you see here at the center point there is a hinge here. Okay. The flapper can go this way or that, that means it can go uh, this way or that way like this one. So, if it go moves like this one obviously, what will happen you see this the flapper position will change clear. The input current is 4 to 20 milli ampere is applied to a coil armature arrangement that acts on a beam. Beam is now the armature okay, or flapper whatever you call it we are no more calling it flapper we are calling it a uh, uh, beam. The beam positions itself against a nozzle. Okay. So, position is the nozzle that has air flowing through it. The gap between the flapper and the nozzle determines the back pressure also called the pilot pressure that builds up in the nozzle. Okay. So, this is the pilot pressures in the nozzles we have seen what is that pilot pressures. You see here the pilot pressure. So, this gap will control the pilot pressure the same thing we have seen that it can be supplied to a relay to get a higher I mean that 3 to 15 psi of pressures also. We have a feedback relay also bellows also okay, to neutralize. The gap between the flap and the nozzle determines the back pressure also called the pilot pressure and builds up in the nozzle. Right? You see the reason of the feedback because it is working like a spring because it comes very close if the if it come, because I have a supply pressure if it comes very close to this one. So, this will increase the back pressure because pilot pressures and the this pressure is same. So, this will increase the more pressures in the bellows. So, it will make the uh, make the system so that it will restrict the nozzle to come very close because it will work as a spring there right. That is the reason we have used a bellows here also. So, the gap between the flapper and nozzle determines the back pressure also called the pilot pressure that builds up in the nozzle. A bellows is sometimes uh, connected a, a bellow I am sorry 
is sometimes connected to the nozzle area to balance the forces on the armature flap. As I told you, it is just like a spring instead of spring, I am using a bellows there which will control the position or the forces on the flapper nozzle system, armature flapper or armature. This is a instead of flappers, we are calling it armature or bar, whatever you call it. Basic principle is the same, the nozzle remains fixed, only the armature is moving. The pylor pressure for linear operation is channeled to a pneumatic relay or booster. Okay, that pylor pressure or the back pressure which is coming, that is going to relay for boosting operations, right. That means it will might be the pressure is less 3 to 15 psi. I will make a small movement. So we have a more linear region. This will lead to uh, after the once it goes through the relay. So I will get a 3 to 15 psi of pressure. The pilot pressure, uh, okay. The booster or relay acts as an amplifier, translating the low pilot pressure into higher output pressures and capacity. Okay, because the capacity is also important because if the capacity of this system might be very, very small in this case, we have a higher capacity. So, we can uh, use a both as the capacity and range, I can go to the a booster circuit or relay circuit. Mechanical I 2 P converter that means current to pressure converter that use a flapper nozzle and which do not use electronic feedback sensor face some difficulty in dealing with the environmental factors. What are those factors? Let us look at. The flapper is susceptible to vibration and traditionally has forced uh, users to mount the IP and uh, current to pressure converter separately on a pipe or rack. This requires additional tubing to carry I 2 P uh, output signal to the valve. The additional cost nullifies the benefit from the mounting the I 2 P converter together in a common location. The dead time and lag time introduced into the loop by longer output signal tubing has a significant impact on the loop performance because whenever we are using some tubing in a pneumatic systems, okay, it is not very I mean predominant in the case of electrical system, but a pneumatic system we are using more tubing, okay, obviously it will increase the, uh, the lag in the system as well as the dead time in the system. Traditional I 2 P converters are also adversely affected by fluctuations in air supply, downstream tubing leaks temperature changes and aging of the magnetic coil within the I 2 P converter. Periodic calibration checks are required in order to maintain the output of the I 2 P converter within the desired range. Dirty supply air is a major cause of I 2 P downtime. Mechanical IPs do not have electronic feedback to compensate for partial plugging, but by designing the nozzles opening to be at least 0 0.04 centimeter that means 0 0.015 inch in diameter this problem can be avoided. Now, there is new type of I 2 P converters uh, has been introduced. Let us uh, look at that I 2 P converter though there is a basic principle is again the flapper nozzle system, but with the help of piezoelectric uh, systems we have used. Several new concepts have been introduced. These new concepts have changed the nature of the pilot stage and have import incorporated sensor based electronic systems. It includes some trade offs like between efficiency and cost or improvement of one factor which leads to the degradation of the other. One such important device is piezo ceramic bender nozzle. So, piezo ceramic bender nozzle you find that piezo you know that there are I mean we can have your I mean uh, natural uh, uh, systems, we have natural piezoelectric systems, we have a synthetic, we have a piezo ceramic also these are some advantage of the piezo ceramic systems. So, let us look at that. Now, piezo ceramic bender nozzles you will find that it device is shown in figure 11. The unit does not use the coil to move that flapper which have used in the con I mean conventional I 2 P converter. There is a coil actually which energizes and which and which current is coming to that coil and it is giving the movement of the flapper. And, but instead the flapper itself is made of layers of different materials which are laminated together. These different materials flex or bend when the voltage applies across them. Right. The 4 to 20 milliampere of current input signal to the I 2 P is first converted to a voltage in the range of 20 to 30 volts DC. Right. Now, this voltage is actually given to the flapper uh, to the this design tends to be more stable in variations vibration than the typical flapper armature. And some of the drawbacks of this new concept are you see that will come later on. Let us see this one. This is our figure you see. You see here. So, we have a lead jar current. This is our ceramic 
piezoelectric systems. So, now first the 3 to uh, 4 to 20 million ampere of currents we are converting to 20 to 30 volt DC is applied. As you know the piezoelectric system is reversible systems. If you apply the pressures I will get a voltage, if you apply the voltage I will get a uh, change in I mean uh, pressure. So, this since it is uh, radium current and brass we are using, so it will try to bend and these bends will be sensed by this you see this lead zirconate and brass and this will make the this will work as a flapper at that time and it will come to the either to the close to the nozzle or to the off. So, this will give you this booster this output this is a pilot pressure okay, which is sensitive to the which is this pilot pressure or the booster pressures or booster control this pilot pressure will be a function of this DC voltage we apply to the flapper nozzle at this ceramic. Okay. And this voltage again it is I mean controlled I mean is a function of the current which is coming right. So, this will lead to you see the whatever the um, pilot pressures we have back pressures I am getting here that is proportional or that is a function of exactly the current which you are getting. So, so many other I mean point of the I mean those we have uh, eliminated here in this because there is no coil as such. So, directly applying and due to this this is a, this is a biometal sort of I mean, this is ceramic and brass obviously this will bend in one direction or the other. So, when the voltage will be applied due to piezoelectric effect. So, obviously, this will make the uh, this flapper close to the nozzle or not or away from the nozzle. The bender does not have a very good memory that means, it has a creep okay, which memory means it is called the creep in the systems and will tend to locate in a different position for the same input signal. The this creep is cumulative cumulative and eventually exceeds the adjustment range of the calibration mechanism. An electronic feedback sensor can be combined with a piezo ceramic bender to compensate for the creep temporarily for the, uh, but the feedback uh, circuit typically uses such more powers available from the input signal having little to energize the bender. The bender cannot balance against the force of the nozzle air unless the nozzle is kept relatively small, thus large nozzles must be traded for improved bender control. Plugging of small nozzles is a cheap reason for I2P field failure. Force balance differential pressure transmitter you see there we have seen that two pressures are coming this side you can see here two pressures I mean P1 sorry this P1 and P2 is coming here from the process right which is coming for the, uh, from the flow. So, these actually from this I am getting a supply pressure which is a function P is a function of K P1 minus P2 because always in the flow measurements we have seen that all different pressure uh, based I mean uh, flow meters. So, this type of output pressure this will be this P1 minus P2 or P O will be calibrated in terms of flow. So, that is we can use a total pneumatic systems we can see this you see uh, there is another I um, mean um, this is a feedback bellows we have used this is a bellows please note feedback bellows we have used to block diagram. And uh, this if I draw the block diagram it looks like this one. So, all the significance is P 1 and P 2 the output pressures and the output pressure is coming here. Two pressures from the upstream and downstream is coming here which is combined. So, we are giving the relation like this one. Say so, one A B 1 A B 2 the area of the bellows K B the below linkage compliance K in the flapper nozzle again and in the above circuit P 1 is always greater than P 2 then the upper below exerts more forces than the lower one always it will be greater because upstream flow is higher. Then does the flapper moves away from the nozzle and the pressure inside the tube A falls. The feedback below cannot hold the flapper in such a position and brings it down. So, the output rest pressure will come P naught equal to A B 1 by A B 2 I 1 by I 2 P 1 minus P 2 right. So, this actually will give you the direct I mean this you see the output pressure is again the function of P 1 minus P 2 which is actually calibrated in terms of the flow. So, with this I come to the end of the flapper nozzle system.